born? Uh, Gary, Indiana. And tell October me about... Th October 30th, 1974. What, what fight was that? What fight was what? The October 30th, 1974? Yep. That was definitely Ali Foreman. Yep. That's it. Got it. I was born that day. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I, was born, I, was, I was born in the same day as the Ali Foreman fight, the one in the jungle. Man. Biggest fight of all time. And that's something special right there. You know it. Yeah, and I was always, I was always a fighter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And tell me about your home life growing up. What was that like? Fighting. I was, I was living in Gary at the time, and so it was fight. Fight was playtime for me. Yeah. <laughs> and and then I then I moved to East Chicago, Indiana. And at nine years old, by that time I was nine years old, I got into a fight at the school, whooped this dude up, you know, beat up this dude. <laughs> Came home, I had blood, dry blood all over my hands. And my dad looked at me and said, you should be fighting again, ain't you? I said, yep. He said, you win? I said, yep. He said, come on with me. He took me to the gym. He took me to the boxing gym at nine years old. He took me off the streets That's, at nine years yeah. old. And I fell in love. That's a legend story right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and so you had a father and you had a mother, I'm sure. Right? What kind of, did you have brothers and sisters? I had two brothers and one sister. And where were you in that order? Were you the youngest, biggest? I was the baby. Uh huh. Yeah, babies are usually oldest, fighters. Yeah, my oldest brother, he graduated from Notre Dame, architect. My other brother, the next oldest, is uh, Jose Manfredi. He graduated from the Navy, did 20 years in the Navy, now he works for the government. My, my sister is a registered nurse. And now only she was snoozing that she, babe, nurse practitioner. nurse practitioner. She's a nurse practitioner. Mm. And me, I'm the fighter. I'm, that's what they call me on each bill. They say I the black sheep of the family. <laughs> so you're real close with your family and stuff? I ain't too much close with my older brother. He used to be a manager of mine at one time. Mm. I ain't too close with him. We had a little couple you know mm -hmm. I love him you know so I love him but yet you know we have our differences you know yeah. he believes in abortion he believes in all kind of stuff that, that I'm against hmm. you know and we just don't get along mm -hmm. uh, my other brother we're cool I'm going over his house for the Mayweather fair he gets it on Facebook I'll be in uh, Virginia for the Mayweather fair he's having a party at his house I'll be there you know, to greet his friends and everybody, you know, that they all know me, they all watch me. So I'll be there to greet them and, you know, spend some time with my brother at the same time. Oh, that's great, man. What, what kind of neighborhood did you grow up in? Huh? What kind of neighborhood did you grow up in? Well, I was born in Gary. Gary murder capital, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, East Chicago is a small city, but it's, it's nowadays, it's, it's rough there. Mm -hmm. Gang bangers are crazy there. I mean, there's gang bangers when I was there too. You know, I never got into the gangs because I always knew I could defend myself. I didn't need help. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what took me away from gang bangers. You know, I didn't respect gang bangers because they need help. You, you can't fight their own battles. You know, yeah. you gotta use knives and guns and all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And how old were you when you first walked into a gym? Nine years old. No, and. What kind of uh, amateur career did you have? Uh, you know, I, probably 48 and 7. Mm -hmm. That's good, man. And uh, I, 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 don't remember, I don't remember too much of my amateur career. All I remember is that I didn't like the amateurs. And I always told myself, once I turn 18, I'm turning pro. Mm -hmm. At 9 years old, I told people I was going to be world champion. At 9 years old, I told people. I told teachers, I told family members, I told friends. Told everybody, and everybody doubted it. They didn't believe me because I was bad in school. And I was mean, you know. I had a lot of hair at that time. <laughs> <laughs> they should, they should have, yeah. they should have believed in you if you're the bad boy, huh? That's well, I, I got people, I got people apologizing to this, to this day. <laughs> teachers apologizing to me, saying that I didn't believe that you're gonna make it. Uh -oh. You know, and I, I say, what do you mean you didn't believe in me? I said, you're not a teacher. You don't give up on your students, no matter how bad they are. Yeah. Teachers don't give one their students, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That ain't baseball, though, man. It's boxing. <laughs> the bad boy makes it. <laughs> well, 
Right. You know? So, what what tournaments did you win as an amateur? CYO, June mm-hmm. Olympics. That's about it. How'd that feel? How'd that feel to win that? Uh, it didn't feel, it, I, it didn't motivate me. Because I, I just didn't like the amateur <coughs> style mm-hmm. of point system and, and, uh, and no technique. You know what I'm saying? Just, it just, it just wasn't me, you know? Mm-hmm. The headgear, I didn't like protecting my head. I didn't like wearing headgears. I, I, it just wasn't me, you know? I, it just my, the, my amateur career, it wasn't flourishing because I, I didn't respect it mm-hmm. as a fighter. Mm-hmm. Because I used to always watch it with my dad on TV, the fights on, the pro fights on TV, you know? And, the little gloves that they had, you know, and no headgear. Mm-hmm. And I said that was a fight. I swear that that's a fight. You know, that's mm-hmm. what I'm gonna be. When I turn 18, I'm turning pro. Mm-hmm. And exactly what happened. As soon as I turned 18, I turned pro. Yeah. And what? And that's you... when I got into my car accident. Oh yeah, right away. Did you get it? Scar my scar on my forehead. That was my car accident. I went straight to the telephone pole. The driver's side was smashed to the passenger side. The front end was smashed to my chest. All I remember was a hand coming in the car through the to my car. I swung at him. He freaks out. He thought I was dead. He said, you go to the hospital. I said, I'm going, home. I'm going home. I said, I'm going home. And I blacked out. All I remember was begging for my life. Give me another chance. I'm going to be somebody. The third time I said, give me another chance. I'm going to be somebody. I woke up in the hospital. I woke up. And I opened my eyes. I'm like, how did I get here in my mind? Doctor walked in, the first person that came out of my mouth, would have been a fight again. No, the doctor said, never mm-hmm. again. You're wow. done. Three months later, I got, in my mind, I said, we'll see about that. Three months later, I got back in the ring. Three years later, I was world champion. Mm-hmm. And what was uh, what was your record at the time of the accident? Oh, wow. My Did you ever? was probably four and two, probably. Okay, so it was early in your career. Would you, would, who'd you uh, first turn pro against? Do you remember the name of the person and what, what round McCullen, it was? McCullen. McCullen. Mm-hmm. I lost my first pro fight. Yeah. Because I, I still was, uh, I was still on the streets. Mm-hmm. Still, I still wasn't, uh, still wasn't 100% there, you know, mentally. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, and I still had the party in me, you know. Yeah. What, what did it feel like to lose your first fight? Did it matter to you at the time? Oh, I, cr- I cried like a baby. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I got dedicated, you know, but I was still wasn't right yet. It wasn't to, after the car accident when I named, nicknamed myself El Diablo, the devil. Mm-hmm. I, I love this story. I knocked out everybody. I was knocking out everybody. Yeah. It's it's I cool said, to hear stories like that, that like, like a fighter who, who made it all the way and they lost their first fight. It's amazing stories, you know? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's a good story. Look at Hopkins and look at Marvin Hagler. You know? Yeah, you know, uh, it's just like anything in life, you know, you lose that, something in life and it hurts because you love it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it hurt me when I lost my first pro fight. It hurt. It hurt tremendously. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I got dedicated and, and then, I got, then I won two more and then I, then I got robbed. I fought a guy named Jeff Mason. Mm-hmm. And it went the distance, but his eye was shut closed. I beat him up that bad. They gave him the fight. It was in his hometown. They gave him the fight. And I, I told my, my, my dad, I said, never again, never would let people go the distance. After that, I got into my car accident. I was doing cocaine and drinking. Mm. I was doing cocaine and drinking. Mm. And I was with the girl, you know, in Whitey, Indiana. And... Uh, I had to leave, you know, because my, my girlfriend at the time was calling me to come home. And and I had to leave, so I, 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 I the girl didn't want me to leave, but I said, no, I got to go. So I left, and it was raining real hard. I was I was driving down Indianapolis Boulevard and from Whiting to East Chicago, Indiana. And I'm driving down the boulevard, and it's raining like, like I never saw before in my life. I couldn't even see the road. If you know a hand coming in the car, and that's what I told you. Mm-hmm. I swung out there, so I stood my car. I went through. I, I didn't know. I went through a telephone pole. And if I would have had my seatbelt on, I would be dead right now. Mm-hmm. Cool. The whole driver's side was smashed. Wow. Man. And after your first five fights, you were two, two, and one. That's not impressive. But then some fire got lit in you. So what happened after that fight? What changes did you make in your life after being two, two, and one? 
to turn after it over. The, after, the, after the car accident, that's when everything changed. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. right after the car accident. I had a totally different output of life. I had a totally different output. And by that time, I had my first daughter, <coughs> uh, Celeste Manfredi. She's my oldest now. She's 18 now. Wow. She's going to graduate high school this year. Mm. I had her at the time, and and after the car accident, I, I was just a totally different person. It's like something was turned on in me. I had a fire lit in me. I wasn't going to have nothing to stop me. I just kept on proclaiming El Diablo, the devil. Kept on lifting up the devil. Kept on lifting up the devil. and kept on knocking people out. If you look in my record, you see all the knockouts I had after I nicknamed myself El Diablo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was after the car accident, I had a number of knockouts, you know. Yeah. That started a 23 fight win streak. And in your seventh fight, you were 3 2 and 1 now? You were fighting a guy with almost 40 fights. Who managed you at the time? Why would, why would you be in your seventh fight fighting a guy with 40 fights? Didn't that matter? No. I'm a fighter. Mm -hmm. so I'm not, I don't want nobody, I, I never wanted somebody to protect me. Mm -hmm. When I fought Calvin Grove, I was only 11 and 2 with 9 knockouts, I believe. No. He was 40, 47 and, and 5. 
Yeah. I said he's not gonna go twelve rounds. He didn't go twelve rounds. He won eight. They get and it was, they stopped the fight. Wow. And before you fought Gotti, you fought a guy named Jimmy Dioria. What do you remember yeah, about Jimmy Dioria? What do you remember Dioria. about that? I remember that. He was a junior welterweight. Mm -hmm. At that, he was a junior welterweight. I'm a junior lightweight <laughs> at the time. They tell me I gotta fight a guy. He weighed. He, he came in at 38, 138 and a half pounds. I came in at I think 32. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he had so many fights that I had so many fights. And they had him winning. It was in his hometown. And I whooped him. I went to with him, but I beat him up bad in the fight. Wow. Yeah. Then you, you, a few fights later, you got your first shot at a title, the WBF Intercontinental Super Featherweight title. You fought right. in that Toronto. Was my, that was my, you, fought, I, you fought the guy in Toronto. What did you think of being in Toronto? Is that the first time out of, out of America for you? Yeah. Yeah. How'd you like being I, in Toronto? I, I enjoyed it. I love Toronto. Toronto is a very clean place. Man. Yeah, that's what very, I heard. The streets are clean and all that. You know, all, all I remember was guys carrying a trolley with, with cases of beer, you know. <laughs> They're walking around on a trolley in cases of beer, you know. What I, mean? yeah, I remember going to the mall. The mall was underground. Uh-huh. Underground. Wow. They, had a, they had a mall underground. That's great. Wow. It was beautiful out there. The food, the filet mignon, I loved it. the food that I was eating. I was eating good, felt good, trained good, prepared myself good. If I was at 126, I said, nobody could beat me. I knocked him out in the third round. Mm -hmm. They tried to, they tried to come against me and try to say that, uh, that, uh, it, it wasn't true. This and that. They tried to fight it. You know what I'm saying? They tried to protest it at mm -hmm. the time in Toronto because he was from Toronto and, they didn't know what was going to happen and it wasn't happening. They didn't know what to do. They were trying to get me, you know. They were trying, they were trying to rig it up, but they couldn't do it. Yeah. You, can't, you, can't, you can't fight against someone that just got knocked out. Mm -hmm. And that was against Vittorio Salvatore. Anything special about him, or did you just go right through him? No, no problem. I went, I went right through the guy. Yeah. I went right through the guy. And then the, the only thing that, that tripped me out, I went six months without a fight. Well, Six months yeah. without a fight. After you won that fight, though, how how did it feel to actually get that title and, and be a champion? I, I, I felt I felt I felt like a world champion. Yeah, thank you. I, I told people I was world champion, mm -hmm. WBF world champion. That's how I felt. You know, at the time, you know, what I'm saying because mm -hmm. it was a belt. You know, and I respected it. You know, what I'm saying it was a trophy. And I respected it. You know, what yeah. I'm saying and I felt on top of the world. You know. Yep. Yeah. The only downfall I had is I didn't have no promoter at the time. So I didn't have a fight for six months. Mm. Then they see Calvin Grove. I'm like, who the heck is Calvin Grove? I don't care, I want to fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all I remember is just saying yes to the fight. Yeah. That was for the WBO title, or WBU title, sorry. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't care. It was for the world title. I, I didn't care. Mm -hmm. You know, Bill can be WU, IB, IBU, I don't care what alphabet it is, it's still a world title. Yep. The champion makes the belt, the belt don't make the champion. And that's true. And, they had and a I, was trying to, I, I was telling the people, and I was proving to the people, I'll fight the best and beat the best, and I'll lose to the best. It does not matter, but I'll step up to the best, and I'll step up, step up to the plate, and I'll fight anybody at any time, anywhere, any place. It does not matter. Because I never was protected. I never had a manager and, and stuff like that. Never had that. Well, Calvin Grove fought everybody. What did you think of being in the ring with Calvin Grove? I didn't think about him. You didn't think nothing I didn't, about him? I, didn't, I, didn't, I, never, I never heard of the guy. Okay, that helps. Yeah, that's cool. Man. Uh, I never heard of the guy, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. all, I know, all I know, he had a lot of fights. Yeah. And when they, when they, when they read off his, 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 his boxing record, I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> Okay, you got a lot of experience, you got a lot of fights. You know, who is this guy? I didn't care. I didn't mm. even think about that. It didn't matter to me at the time. I was El Diablo, the devil ain't nothing gonna stop me. I had a switch turned on after the crash and then nothing was gonna stop me. Mm -hmm. I was unstoppable and I, I went right through the Calvin Grove. Yeah. Easy fight. It, it was it was it was alright in the beginning. It was 
you know, they're, they're counting me out mm -hmm. in the fight. But once I caught him with that straight right hand, mm -hmm. that was it. <laughs> Yeah. Then you fought Harold Petty. What'd you, what'd you yeah, Harold Petty. That? What do you think of that? He was, he, well, Harold Petty was an older fighter, but he had a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. He was a softball, too. So, I mean, I knew he wasn't strong enough to get me. I was too young. I was too strong. And I didn't care about his experience. I didn't care about, no, I didn't care about nobody at the time. When I was there, I didn't care about nobody. I mm -hmm. didn't care about nothing. It's just me and you. Let's go. Bring it. I don't care who you are. You ain't gonna stop me. No. Yeah. I had an attitude. You know, I had a bad attitude. I, I wasn't gonna. I talked. Uh, I'm the only one. I talked stuff to Mayweather, and mm. Mayweather was quiet at that time. <laughs> he's not like he is now. <laughs> like he is now, he's very arrogant. He's very cocky. He's very, you know, he is the best. I take nothing away from Mayweather. Mm -hmm. But when I fought Mayweather, he was quiet as can be. When mm -hmm. the first conference, he was quiet as can be, man. Yeah, and after the uh, Harold Petty fight, you fought uh, no contest with David Toledo. What do you remember about that fight? Uh, David Toledo, he was just another softball, fast, slick mm -hmm. guy. Uh, he was hard to get to, but we, we got to him. But every time we got to him, our heads collided, and it just went the way it went. Yeah. But the head bumped, and he's getting cut all the way to no contest. Mm -hmm. So I retained my title and, you know, it was just an experience fight that I had to learn from something that I never, uh, never been through with any fighter before where, where I <laughs> went a fight through head bunch, you know, through cuts, no contest, you know, but uh, it, it was what it was. Mm -hmm. And then after that fight, you went to South Africa. What did you think about being in South Africa when you were there? I loved it. I was like, you know, when when they told me something other, I was like, I was like, cool. You know, I, cause I, I like traveling. Uh -huh. yeah. So when I went to Toronto, I loved it. When I was traveling from state to state, I loved it. Mm -hmm. And when I leave the country, I loved it. And when they told me so that, I said, cool, that's, that's where the black people live. That's where I was born around. That's Gary, Indiana. That's 19 black. I said, cool. I said, I said I love going to Africa. Yeah, I go to Africa. The fight this South African champion. I said, yeah, cool. I'll defend my world title in South Africa. Doesn't that matter to me? I, I loved it. I, 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 uh, I, was, I was just like, you know, I was just like, oh, yeah. I definitely... Uh, Suggested that I, I, it's very, very rarely I say no to a fight, yeah. and basically I never said no to a fight. Mm -hmm. And did anything surprise you about South Africa? No. Nah, what, what surprised me? You know, I trained for a right-hander. Get this: I trained for a right-hander. Mm -hmm. Okay, this guy's supposed to be right hand. We, 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 it's, it's. I didn't know it was summertime out here, and we get on the plane. So I got shorts on, tank top. <laughs> I got my summer clothes with me. Mm -hmm. So we fly, and we're in the air. It took 24 hours to get there. Wow. We get we get off the plane, and I just embrace my arms like, what the heck? It's freezing. It's winter out there when it's summer out here. <laughs> nobody, nobody told me that it was winter. <laughs> All I brought was summer clothes. <laughs> so I'm in shorts, and I'm holding, I'm in tank down. I'm holding myself because I'm freezing, and... And and they take me to um I remember taking me to a, a welfare place in South Africa where they got me clothes, where they got me clothes and all that. And I got South African gear and got hooked up with all kind of South African gear and all that. Mm. And I want I, I wanted to let people know I'm in South Africa. I'm I'm, I'm part of South Africa. You know, mm. I wanted to I think they got away with they they they. they, they they think they got away with, with tricking me. <laughs> and it was winter out here, and, uh, and, and I and you know what I'm saying. So they gave me clothes and all that to wear, you know. Mm. And went to the gym, freezing cold. We couldn't even loosen up nothing. I remember I, I, I was there three days before the fight. Mm -hmm. You got to be there a month yeah. before the fight because of the high altitude. Yeah. They didn't tell me about that. That's two. They didn't mm. tell me. I go to the weigh-in. You know, I see this tall guy. That's him. He's the fighter. He weighs in. 
cool. I went, cool. Witch doctor guy comes up to me. Uh -oh. He had bones around his neck. Witch doctor. Mm. I knew it was a witch doctor. Yeah. Just knew he wasn't right, you know. Uh -huh. he, comes, he, he looked at me, he looked at me, stared at me in my eyes. He goes, you white man. You can't be a South African champion. He black man. <laughs> and I, and I, I looked at him right in his eyes and I showed him five fingers. And I put it down. And he said, five. But why you say five? I showed him five fingers and I, and I, and I, and I, I went across my neck. With, five, with the five fingers, I want to cross my neck like I'm gonna kill you. Mm -hmm. So he he freaked out. And he took off. He left. Wow. <laughs> I, 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 the next day we were fighting. He's in the ring. They're waiting for me. I play DMX, and I'm coming up. The I'm coming up slow, and I put my devil's mask on. And I'm coming out slow, and people see me and they're looking at me like, what the hell is that? <laughs> and I I go in the ring. And the, the the guy that was gonna fight me, he looked at me, he was freaked out. <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't know. I trained for right hander. I find out the first round he was a softball. Oh, shoot, man, it's tricky. That's that's four things four, yeah. about what, what, what they did. They shot to come against me. Mm -hmm. After the fourth round, I was breathing hard because you're in high altitude, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. But I heard that voice in my mind. This round, you're gonna get him. Mm. Fifth round came, I jumped on him. Boom. Knocked him out in the fifth round. Yeah. That's awesome. And it's cool because you held five fingers up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Knocked him out in the fifth round. Oh, yeah. And the witch doctor came into the ring. He, goes, <laughs> he looked at me. He goes, he goes, you don't fight like white man, you fight like black man. <laughs> I looked at him and I said, I am black, can't you see? <laughs> he look, and he looked at me in my eyes and looked and mm. took at his head like a dog. Mm. Looked at me like, the heck, he is black. <laughs> 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 it was crazy, man. It was crazy. We had an awesome time in Africa, though. We had, yeah. I fought, I fought, uh, what yeah, was that? Mthobeli Malofi. Mthobeli Melope. Melope? Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you, because I couldn't pronounce that. <laughs> but man, you yeah, he's uh, he's uh, he's 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 one of the guys that on my right arm, is the devil side, which is the scar side of my face, the right side of my face, my right arm, all the tattoos I got, I got skulls going around my arm. Mm -hmm. He's he's one of the guys with, with the date and his name's inside one of the skulls. Wow. And it's cool. Every time I knocked out somebody, I put him in the skull. I got Gotti in there. I got everybody in there. Wow. And you freaked out a witch doctor. Who can do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He tripped out. He said, you don't fight like white man. You fight like black man. <laughs> I said, I am black. Can you see? Mm. <laughs> he looked at me like a dog. <laughs> That was, that, was, that was so funny, man. That was so funny. When I tell people that, they start laughing. Yeah, I said, I said, brother, I said, they, they had everything against me, man. They they came against me because my promoter was from South Africa. Mm -hmm. At the time, Sergio Krishna. He yeah. didn't tell me. He didn't tell me he was a winner. He didn't tell me he was a foul Paul. Hmm. He didn't tell me a witch that was going to come out to me. <laughs> he, didn't tell me he didn't tell me they ain't going to have no gym for me to work out in. Freezing cold gym. He didn't tell me it was winter. Yeah. Five things he didn't tell me. But <laughs> it, it did not matter. In my mind, all I, all I, all I could, all I could think was destroyed. Mm -hmm. See, I'll forgive anyone for not telling me about weather, but tell me about a witch doctor. You know, <laughs> tell me about yeah. a witch doctor. The, I'm saying. The, the more, the more, the, the more they put in front of me, the more strong I became. Uh -huh. So when I got off that plane, when it was freezing. Mm -hmm. It made me more angrier. I got meaner. Mm. When the gym was freezing cold, I got meaner. Mm. When way scale, we start coming to me, I got meaner. Mm. South Paul, meaner. Winter, meaner. Mm. I was, the time I got in that ring, I didn't know I was going to knock him on the fifth round. I just held up five fingers and I went to go. I didn't know. But the fifth mm -hmm. round can I knocked on the fifth round. Coincidence, huh? Mm. Yeah, someone else is watching. Something. Yeah, yeah. Mm. 
A couple of fights later, you fought in Austria. How'd you like Austria? Loved it. Beautiful. I was sick. I was sick when I was out there. Uh -huh. I got sick out there. I didn't eat the food or nothing. Mm -hmm. I was very skinny for that fight. If you watch that fight, I fought uh, ja Wilfredo Luis. Luis. Yeah. I got, I got, I was very. If you watch, I got, I got, a, I got all my fights on DVD. I mm -hmm. was very sick that fight. What was after, happened? after the fourth round, again we're in the we're in, after the fourth round again. <coughs> the first the first two rounds I almost knock him out. The third and fourth round he beat the dog out of me, hmm. beating the dog out of uppercuts, hooks. Every, he's hitting me whatever they did. Knock, he's knocking me all over the ring. When I came back in the fourth round, my trainer he looked at me. He said, "You all right?" Like in slow motion, like hmm. a movie. You all right? Hmm. I looked at him and said, this round, I'm going to get him. He looked at me like, what? Like I was crazy. <laughs> that, that round, I came out and took round. All I remember is hearing a voice in my mind. Not hmm. yet, not yet, not yet. Now, I slipped the jab. Hmm. Hit him with the right hand. Boom. He was out. Hit him with the left. Boom. He was out cold. He was out cold. If you watch the fight. Yeah. You watch that fight. That fight was awesome. Like them all cold. Hmm. Wow. Then when you, when you got back, you fought the guy who almost beat Gotti, Wilson Rodriguez. What you would you think of that fight? That was in uh, Atlantic he, City. He he was he was a tough fighter. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, he cracked my nose with an uppercut. I forget what round it was when I was bleeding out my nose. Mm -hmm. He cracked my nose with an uppercut. But I was very accurate in that fight, mm. very strong for that fight, yeah. and and I, I beat him easily. I, I should have did. You know, if you watch the fight on tape, it's, he didn't want to fight no more. He was on a stool and arguing with his coach that he didn't want to fight no more. Stop the fight! Stop the fight! His coach was yelling at him, telling him, "No, no, no, no! <laughs> Come on, you can do it!" You know it was. You're feeling something on the top of his head up there. He could do it. He could do it. Don't don't give up. Don't give up. You know. And that that round that he came out, he didn't want to come out for that round. The same round that he came, he knocked me down that that round. Mm -hmm. And I I got up and I continued to fight and I won the fight easily. Yeah. Were you nervous going into that fight at all? No. Was that your first? Was, that was your first fight on HBO, wasn't it? Yeah, my first fight on HBO and. The bigger the the bigger the T V the the more better I do. Mm hmm Yeah, that's cool, man. Some people freeze, you don't wanna do that. No, I, not me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I wanna fight the best. Yeah. And, and that's <clears throat> what I did, you know. Mm hmm My career I fought the best. I made mistakes during uh, my career and you're gonna learn about those mistakes when I tell you. Yeah. yeah everyone makes them. Yeah, we all make them, you know, it was something that I, I had to go through as a fighter and I look back at my life and I, I see where I made mistakes, mm -hmm. I see my decisions that I made, and I'm mature as a man, as a, not only a man, but as a father, as a husband, and as a fighter, I see the mistakes I made and the decisions that I made throughout, throughout my career. Mm -hmm. And you can no, see. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, and I see why I lost the fight that I that I fought that I that I lost. Mm -hmm. I know why. Yep. Every time you lost, I noticed you'd come back somewhat different. You know, you had to change something, and you always did. Yeah, and that was a no no. That was a no no because I should have kept my team together. Hmm. I should have kept the team. I should have kept what was. What got us there? I could have kept. I should have kept the team together. What got us there? <clears throat> then Sam Colonna and John Taylor. Sam Colonna, John Taylor, and Jen Strickler, mm -hmm. my cut man. That's the team that I should have kept. But I, I want to change. Mm -hmm. I want to change, and that's where I messed up. Yeah. You, you still have Sam Colonna. At, during the Wilson Rodriguez fight, you had them all the way. Yeah, I had later. Taylor, I had Shannon Plum, Taylor, and Shirkin, the same people. I had the same people, I still had them for the Cotty fights, they still had them. Mm -hmm. 
But the, the next fight was the Pyres fight. Yeah, yeah, next fight. And two fights later, you fought a guy named Kevin S- Sedan, but he's only 13. Yeah, he was, he, was, he, was, he was like 25 pounds heavier than me. Oh, yeah? Wow. Yeah, and I knocked him out. Knocked him out in two. Mm-hmm. Just came easy. <laughs> I guess it's like the bigger the man, you'll play with him even, even more. It's crazy, man. You give you something that, that that should put you back somewhat, and you just rise above it. Right. That's what you do. Well, when I was out there, I was a different person. Mm-hmm. You know, I just had a different spirit moving me. Possessed. Yeah, man. Possessed. I was. I was. Uh, you could say. You could say in some ways. You could say that. Mm-hmm. I was. I was worldly. I was very. Uh, you know, people didn't really realize that. It. it wasn't, I was dedicated to boxing. Mm-hmm. Wholeheartedly. Nothing got in the way of my boxing. I told my wife, you know, my wife, she said, what do you mean? I said, boxing is my wife. Boxing would be this family. Boxing bought this house. Boxing put the food on the table. Boxing buys your clothes, but that's my wife. Mm. My wife looked at me like I was crazy. Yeah. You're lucky you're still married. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very, I'm very thankful. You know, yeah. I'm very thankful. I tell you about, I, I tell you about our marriage. It's part of my career. It's part of my, my change, my conversion, me getting my life together. Yeah. My story is a movie. Mm-hmm. My story is a movie. I tell everybody. Ron Shelton. He wants to do a movie on me, but we lost contact with one another. But he wants to do a movie on my career, on my life. Mm-hmm. My 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 life is a movie, man. Yes, what I've gone through in life, it broke people's heads up, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shut up, what I've gone through. So what 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 happened during your marriage? Like, were you married? You were married from from your first pro fight? Nope. When you when you meet your your, I guess girl before you married her was that the same girl that that called you when you yeah okay. Mm-hmm. That's this this same girl. I've been with her for 21 years. That's great. But I was with everybody else's girl and doing what I wanted to do, you know, doing my own thing, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, I was training for the Mayweather fight. I was in Florida. Bad mistake. I shouldn't have went to Florida. Couldn't make the weight. No way. Couldn't make 130, but they gave me a million dollars. So I said, cool. I said, give me a million dollars. I'll make 130. I just go somewhere. I had my own chef. Bought me a chef. Mm-hmm. Had my own chef. I'm on sparring partners, training facility, trainers, paid for everything, paid twenty five thousand dollars for everything. Trained for a month, trained, preparing for for Mayweather. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking in the girl in the camp. Mm-hmm. The first time I let something get in the way of my boxing. Mm-hmm. I let she goes. A couple days later, I have a. I have a dream, and the dream, God shows me my wife. Mm-hmm. I wake up, I called her up, she said, hello? I said, babe, I proposed to her. She said, yes. I said, cool. I flew her down, her and the kids. My kids were very young at that time. They, they drove down the floor of Florida. We got married inside the boxing ring that I was training in. We got married there, in training camp. In preparation for Mayweather. Wow. I got married during training camp in preparation for Mayweather. Mm. Why would you get married for training camp in preparation for Mayweather? So would you, why would you get married if you're training and preparing for one of the biggest fights of your life? One of the biggest fights. He wasn't the biggest fight. Gotti was the biggest fight. But Gotti was the big name. Mayweather was young. You just be uh, Wilson uh, Hernandez. Mm-hmm. He was nobody. I beat Gotti. I beat the one that was knocking out everybody. I yeah. beat the superstar of boxing. Yes, you did. But yep. uh, but uh, I had a dream, okay. and I woke up. Guy showed me who my wife was. I woke up. I called her. Proposed to her. She said <clears> yes. <throat> she drove down, brought her family down. We got married inside the boxing ring. Had my cook prepare all the food for the wedding. Everything. Got married in the boxing. Now, why would I get married? Wouldn't Wouldn't it make sense? <laughs> the first fight, <laughs> and after the fight, get married. Hey, I don't know. The the marriage worked but, out, but, right? But but yeah, it worked out. But 
it was a, it was a distraction, but yeah. God was dealing with me during that time. Yes, He was. And that yeah. was to fix my life. I've been with her for so long. That's my wife. Mm -hmm. She stuck with me through thick and thin, bad times, good times. She's a strong woman, even though I cheated on her many times. She still stood by my side no matter what. Mm -hmm. and then I'm, I'm, I'm married, so I see it now, and I say, you know, wow, I see the piece to the puzzle what God was doing in my life, mm. and how I got married during that training camp. And I didn't care really about the Mayweather. I didn't care about Mayweather. Mm -hmm. In the press conference, I was talking stuff to that guy, man. He was quiet as can be. Mm -hmm. I was talking all this stuff. And in reality, I was psyching myself out because I couldn't make the weight. Mm -hmm. But I made it. I made 130. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I fight Mayweather. Well, don't don't talk about the fight yet. Don't talk about it. Okay, okay. <laughs> we'll get to it. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> That's all right, man. I, I want to hear about it. But I'll, I'll leave the people waiting. <laughs> but you fought, you fought Jorge Paez around that fight. Yeah, yeah, that, Jorge Paez. How that fight? Well, I, I, I knew Jorge Paez was a veteran. Mm -hmm. He was a clown as well. <laughs> yeah. And I knew he was going to pull something, but I just didn't know what. And I didn't care either way. Either way, it I didn't care about what he was doing, so it wasn't in my mind, no way. But when I came out, as usual, El Diablo was coming out very slow and playing his music. I got into the ring and I looked across the across the ring and he's a nun. <laughs> he's just as a nun. <laughs> and what I said in my mind when I looked at him, I said, oh, you trying to make fun of me, huh? <laughs> okay. And look what happened in the fight. <laughs> yeah. Yep. One, one left foot. He fought like a nun. You made him look like a nun. <laughs> One left foot. They're they're complaining why I haven't knocked them out yet. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, uh, Larry Merchant, I think, believe his name is. Yeah. He was the bad person in boxing. He don't talk good about nobody. Who, only only Gotti. Gotti was jocking Gotti, boy. <laughs> boy. <laughs> didn't call me a movie star. I beat a movie star, but you're not a movie star. Well, he's not a movie star yet. He's not what Gotti would. Oh, come on with that, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. they, they had evenly matched fights for Gotti. That's what made him look good in those fights. He mm -hmm. had a lot of good fights. That take nothing away from Gotti. Well, how'd you Gotti find out? How'd you good. find out you had that fight? How'd that fight even come up? Who? How'd you find out you got the fight with Gotti? After the Pius fight, they talked to me. When they talked to me, I said, I said, there, I said, yeah, I told them who was next. I said, bring on Gotti. Bring on, bring on Gotti. But Gotti can't beat me. Bring on Gotti. And I, I forget the words that I said. But I said, bring on Gotti. Mm -hmm. And I know Gotti was watching. Mm -hmm. But remember. he didn't want to fight me at 130. He wanted to fight me at 135. And when he, when he, when he wanted to fight me at 135, I was very, very thankful. I didn't even negotiate the purse. I just took what they gave me and I said, cool. It was in his hometown. He had he got the money. He didn't put his blood on the line. <coughs> it did not matter. Mm -hmm. He couldn't beat me. Especially mm -hmm. because they made it at 135. Because mm -hmm. I couldn't make 130. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people say that they're, they didn't like what Gotti did and not defending his title against you, but you were actually good with that. You're happy about that. Yeah, because it wasn't about the belt. Mm -hmm. It was about, I told Gotti, I said, I said, it ain't about your belt, I said. It's about your name on my record. Angel Manfredi, K.O. Arturo mm -hmm. Gotti. That's what it's about. It's not about, it's about the person. It's not about the belt. Mm -hmm. And they, and they made the fight a 12 round. How can you make it a, a fight a 12 round if they made a title fight? Yeah. That yeah. was a 12 round fight they made. That's mm -hmm. for, that was to help him. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know yeah. And what about the fight itself? What, what did Gotti say to you when you when you said that to him? What kind of person was Gotti? He, he didn't say nothing. No? He just looked look at me weird. He, he, no, no. I remember a press conference in, in uh, New York. He turned around, he looked at me, he said, you got what you wanted, you happy now? I said, I see you happy. 
this is what I've been waiting for my whole life. Hmm. And it was a good fight. Actually, I'll tell you something. That was the last fight. There was a time that I was having dreams about fights that I'd be excited about. And I would actually see what would happen in the fights. And I would tell people before it happened and everything. It's weird. I don't, a lot of people think I'm making it up or made it up. But I told my mother, I saw Gotti cut and on the ropes when you were hitting him. And I swear to God, exactly the way I saw it in my dreams is exactly like a camera angle that HBO's cameras took. And it's exactly what I saw. It's weird, man. But after that fight, I never had another boxing dream again, no matter what. <laughs> I always wow, wanted to. Wow. It was weird, man. But that was the last one. You know, uh, that fight, that fight, uh, you know, that fight it was, uh, it was the best fight, you know, that I shined that fight, you know, because mm -hmm. I was going to show people that I could be the best. And Gotti was the best. Mm -hmm. Hey, hands down, Gotti was the best during that era. Hell yeah, yeah. He was knocking out everybody. He yeah. was the show. He was the high ratings. He was everything. He was making all the, he was generating big money for HBO. Mm -hmm. But he had to fight El Diablo. He had to fight Angel Man Freddy. And that, he was, wasn't going to get past me. Mm -hmm. And what about the fight? Everything itself? worked out. Everything worked out for me during that fight. Yeah. The weight class. Mm -hmm. he, when he, when he won a 135, I said, cool. Forget the belt. Doesn't. Don't, don't matter to me. I'm gonna have his name on my record. Wow. The name, the name is more important than a belt. IBF. I care less about an IBF metal belt. Mm -hmm. It's your name, Arturo Thunder Gotti. Mm, that's the name. He's on my record. <laughs> that's it. Took it. And and what what about the fight? What do you remember about that the fight? fight? Was uh, the first round. First round, we're just fighting and. I caught him with an old right hand. Mm. Cut him. Yep. I love those Reyes gloves. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I used to love Reyes gloves, you know. They're small. They're, yeah. they're Mexican style gloves, but they they fit your hand perfectly, you know. And they're puncher's gloves, you know. And I, I know how to, I was taught how to turn over my hands to cut, you know, how to cut people. Mm -hmm. So I know how to cut people and I cut them. Right when I turn over, my right hand stripped the jab, cut him. So I cut him the first round. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did he ever catch you with anything? Third. I'm sorry. Go on, man. I'm sorry. Then the, then the third round, I knocked him down. He should have been out. He barely got up. He was stunned. Yeah. Anybody else there probably stopped the fight because he was dazed big time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I jumped on him, and he he he's a warrior. He fought back. You know, uh, I kept on fighting him. I threw a round with, I think it was the fifth round, but I threw a straight right hand and hit, caught him on the forehead and broke my hand. Wow. I broke my hand in the fifth round. Yeah. So I was fighting the last three rounds with a broken hand. And I was hitting him with a broken hand. They, they said, why ain't you, why ain't you, can't, why ain't you ain't using the right hand? Why ain't you, why, why ain't you, because I broke it, Bozo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I broke my hand in the fifth round. Yeah, wow. And did he ever catch but you? I did it with one hand. I did it with mm -hmm. one hand. I beat him with one hand. Yeah. And, and what was it? it didn't like? matter. I, a lot of people think he was coming on at the end. Was he? Did you feel like he was kind of? Was it the hand? No, nah, I was still, I was still, I was still hurting him. Uh -huh. The last round, I was still hurting him. Yeah. I was catching him. I, I was hitting, I was hitting him with the right hand. Mm hmm. And with a broken hand. I was hitting him with a broken hand. No. I didn't care about the pain. I did not, not matter. I wasn't going to let this fight get past me. Mm. I kept on picking him apart, you know. Yeah. He, he couldn't handle me no more. I already had, he was already a defeated fighter. Mm -hmm. He didn't win those rounds. I won those rounds. Yeah. And what what happened? Did he ever catch you with anything that made you, like, whoa? Uh, I caught him with a body shot. Mm. You know what round it was. I'm with a body shot like the one on me and I backed up off him and he was chasing me but then I recuperated probably uh, about a minute later I was okay mm -hmm. yeah. but he knocked the one out of me and what happened at the after it was over and you and you won how'd that feel beating Arturo Gotti uh, that was that was superstardom right there mm -hmm. you know? yeah. I'm a superstar 
you know, I knew I was a superstar because I beat the best. That's mm-hmm. what I always wanted to do, <clears throat> the best. Yeah. And I did that in my career. You did it. I can always say that I beat the best. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry if I interrupted you, man. You interrupt me. But what did Gotti say to you? What did Gotti say to you after that fight? He said, let's do it again. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they asked me about a rematch after the fight. And I said, you know what? He wasn't the champion. He wasn't the champion. We didn't put his belt on the line. <laughs> so I said, I said, so I want the next up-and-comer. Bring on Prince. Bring on the showboat. Want to talk to talk, can't walk the walk, bring on the little showboat. Bring on Prince. He can't be me. He's too small for me. God, he's stronger now. He can't, he ain't stronger than me. Bring on Prince. And Prince didn't want to fight me. He made up excuses. His manager made up excuses. Oh, and a year from now, two fights from now, we'll fight him. They didn't even negotiate. No. No. Nah. Then- I could make 130 in a way, but. I mean, if the money would have, the, you know, that's the, it's, 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 a, it's money talks, you know, in this game, you know, and that's the first time I let money get in the way for the Mayweather fight. Yeah, I'll tell you, though, it's uh, prize uh, fighting. Otherwise, man. I wouldn't have, huh? It's prize fighting. It's, you're fighting for a prize, so it's a, you got to do what you got to right. do. Right, I, I, yeah, but I wouldn't have fought Mayweather. Yeah, I hear you, man. I hear you. I'm gonna tell you what the story about me was. Well, let's get to the next fight. <laughs> it's like you're, you're making me want to hear it. <laughs> but when when you broke your hand in the Gotti fight, how come you fought just five months later? Like, why didn't you give it more time to heal? No, I just I wanted to fight. That's it. Yeah. So you had to go. And, to and during that time, during that time, remember I was El Diablo. Mm-hmm. That's so I, I didn't let nothing get in the way of boxing. But after the fight, mm-hmm. it's party time. Okay. Yeah, man. It's party time. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I blew money like crazy, man. Wow. I was, blowing, I was blowing money left and right, man. Party, man. I'd take a stack of hundred, five thousand dollars in one night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Next day, I'm worth fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. Wow. I'm going through, I'm going through money like water, man. What were you buying? What, were, what was the things you were buying then? <laughs> buying uh, cars and stuff? No, cocaine, oh, okay. <laughs> ecstasy, acid, wow, weed, man. alcohol. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was crazy. I was El Diablo. Yeah. I was what, after the fight, it's party time. Uh-huh. Wow. After every, after all these fights we're talking about, mm-hmm. it's party time. Yeah. When would you cut it out? Would, would you stop it all right away in training, or would you train while doing it? When too? they, when they, when they call me and tell me. Fights in a month and a half. Mm-hmm. Cool. Everything shuts down. Don't go home with be in bed by ten o'clock. Mm-hmm. Train. Run. No sex. Hmm. Hey <laughs> yeah, man, that's that's the life of a fighter, man. So, I guess you you got away from that rule in the Mayweather fight. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, when I got married, I still didn't have. I just for the middle of the fight, I, I I was with this girl and we did what we did. Mm-hmm. You know, I forgot where I met her from. You know, but I got her pregnant, and and after the middle of the fight, I said, "No, I'll take care of this and this." She said, "No, you're married now. This and that, and I'm getting an abortion." After that. Next fight we got you fought La Scene, then after that you fought and I know it wasn't the big garden, but it was still the theater and still the garden. How how did it feel fighting at the garden for the first time ever? Oh, uh, they had me about thirty stories high, a picture of me, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Standing boxing stance. Mm-hmm. They had my picture so big, so high, you know. And it was awesome fighting Madison Square Garden. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was awesome. But that, after that after the John Brown fight, mm-hmm. I just I couldn't make one thirty. I knew it. I I wanted they they said they wanted me to defend myself for the seventh time. If you defend your title seven <laughs> times you get a championship ring. Mm-hmm. So I said, Cool. I said I'm gonna go down one more time at one thirty. I fight John Brown. I fought John Brown, he rocked me during the fight. I won the fight, but he rocked me I figured what round he rocked me in. Mm-hmm. And I said, Holy 
you know, morally, you know. Mm. You know, and I got done fighting, I won the fight. But I said, never again, I can't make 130. I'll never fight 130 again, I'm fighting 135. Yeah. And then they, then they came to me in my attorney's office in Chicago, Illinois. And it was Lou DiBella, I remember it. And he said, we have a fight for you. I said, cool. <laughs> I'll fight anybody, you know that. I'll fight anybody. Bring on, bring on anybody, I'll fight anybody. He said, Floyd Mayweather. I said, <laughs> Floyd Mayweather. I said, he said, Floyd Mayweather. I said, who's that? I said, I'll fight them. I don't care. I'll fight them. I want a million dollars, though. I want a million dollars. 130. I can't make 130. Hmm. That's, that's the thing. Yeah. Spoke it. Yeah. Now, see, the Bible says, speak those things that are not as though they were. Hmm. So I spoke. I couldn't make 130. Hmm. I already spoke it to existence. So in reality, I can't make it. I'm speaking those things that are not as though they were. So I'm speaking, I can't make 130. I mean, I can't make 130. Mm -hmm. So, and in my mind, I can't make 130. I said, he said, million dollars. <laughs> and I thought, I stopped and I thought in my mind, he's looking at me, he said, million dollars. I was like, in my mind, I said, okay, million dollars. <laughs> wow. I get, I get to camp. I get a chef, get a cook, need a cook, got to get a cook, got to get a chef, get a camp, got to go somewhere hot. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know who the heck Mayweather is, I don't care who he is, no, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, you're on. Yeah. Made the Mayweather fight. Yeah. So Lou DiBella came to you and made that fight. Came from Lou DiBella. Yep. And then uh. Yep. He was he was working for HBO back then. Yeah. So tell me about the camp now, man. There it is. <laughs> uh, the See. camp. We 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 were in Florida. Mm -hmm. Got all our sparring partners there. <clears throat> my chefs there. My trainers are there. They were there with preparing. You know, during training camp, I had a girl come in. This is the girl that got pregnant white girl, mm -hmm. took care of her, you know what I'm saying? She went away, she didn't come back. A couple of days after that, I had a dream. And the dream, God showed me, showed me my wife, a picture of my wife. I saw her face, and I'm like, I woke up. I called her up. I said, babe, said, yeah. I proposed to her, she said yes. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, we gotta get you down here to the camp. I want to get married in the ring. I want to get married in the ring. I want to get married in the atmosphere and the place where my job is at, mm -hmm. where I love, which is the boxing ring. I want to get married in there. So we got married inside the boxing ring, got married, and then I continued training for after we got married. We ate, everything, everything was good, we celebrated, everything was good. They went home, then we finished preparing for Mayweather, and then uh, I had a hard time making 130 for the, for the Mayweather fight. Yeah. I was very weak, very weak. And after I made 130 for the fight the day of the weigh-in, even before the fight, after the weigh-in, I couldn't eat nothing. Uh, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't, I tried to put food down, and it just wouldn't stick. Hmm. You know, Gotti, he, you know, he loses. 15 pounds, 20 pounds. He, he eats and puts 20 pounds back on. Mm -hmm. Me, I lose 8 pounds, 9 pounds. So I don't walk around heavy. Yeah. I used to walk around about 8, 9 pounds. Lose 8, 9 pounds. I only put 3 pounds back on. Mm -hmm. So I was very weak for that fight, but I take nothing from where it was. I was a company with a nice right hand. Stunned me. <coughs> He attacked, and I heard a voice in my mind say, defense. I kept my hands up, and he was swinging away. Got me on the ropes, caught me with a shot. I went to the ropes, got off the ropes. He kept on swaying, kept on blocking. Caught me with another shot. Uh, he, 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 the last three, four punches he caught, he, I, he didn't land, they stopped the fight. Mm -hmm. I said, what? 
I started going off, cussing at the referee. You ask this, you mother ask this. God, you should have to this. You know, you, you're only supposed to stop a fight when a man can no longer defend himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was defending myself. The voice I heard was, defend yourself at all times. I was defending myself. He called me three or four times. Yes, I did not take that away from him. But he, 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 he I was just about to throw a punch and they stopped the fight. Mm-hmm. And that's the way that, that fight went. Yeah. After that fight, I, I told myself, that was the first time I ever did something for money. Mm-hmm. First time I ever did something for money for my boxing career. I did that fight for money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't listen to my body. You gotta listen to your body. Yeah. If anybody needed my name was Mayweather. I was a superstar, not Mayweather. You know, they, they didn't want to fight at 135, they wanted to fight at Mayweather, so for Mayweather the title. Mm-hmm. So, so what did after that fight went, uh, after that fight went back up to 135? Yeah. What did what did Floyd say after the fight? To you? Did, was he talking then, or was he? Yeah, he said he give me a fight, give me a rematch, but he didn't. He was full of it. Yeah. yeah. Then after that, you came mm-hmm. back and got a pretty good win against Ernesto Benitez. Then you fought Ivan Robinson, another guy who mm-hmm. fought. Got the got got the highest rating on yeah. HBO. Yep. It did he just came off his Gotti fights, and I guess it was two Gotti conquerors. What would you remember about that fight? I didn't even watch when he fought Gotti. No, you had two. I, I already knew. I told him. I told everybody that he ain't the one that beat Gotti. I'm the one that beat Gotti. Mm-hmm. I beat him in his prime. Not not. He beat Gotti. He had leftovers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I showed it during the fight too. I showed the whole world during that fight. Mm-hmm. Even though my right hand still wasn't a hundred percent. My right hand during my whole career my right hand was not a hundred percent. It was seventy five, sixty percent during my whole career. I fought like that. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, I, Ivan Robinson was the first guy I interviewed ever. He's a real good guy, man. But Yeah, he's cool. Yeah. What'd you guys say to each other? Was it was it a? What'd you think of him as a fighter first? What, what was the fight like? Easy uh, I, I, I didn't. I didn't. You know. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't think about nothing. You know. Mm-hmm. I know he beat Gotti twice. You know. And I'm like, and he was claiming that he's the one that really beat Gotti. I'm like, because he beat him twice. I'm like, what? Yeah. I'm the one that beat Gotti. He had leftovers. So I'm, I beat Gotti in, in his prime. I said, man. Bring it on. Yeah, you know, I only made a quarter million for that fight when I fought I Ivan Robinson. I should have made way more money than that. But it wasn't about the money. That's when I went back to my old self and said, you know what, bring it. Bring it. I didn't even care about the money. I said, bring it. Quarter million? I said, quarter million. Bring it. I destroyed him on HBO. <coughs> mm-hmm. Magic Johnson was there. Woody Harrelson was right next to to my uh, wife, <laughs> Tom Van Deers was there. All the H field stars were there. They all saw me spank that boy. Hmm. Yeah. Good fight though, man. Pretty good fight. Yeah. Uh, he had nothing. He couldn't do nothing, nothing to you. in that fight. Yeah. And then after that, you fought Lizaraga. Had a lot of fights. What was that fight like? I don't Luis? remember that one. No. And you got your shot at the WBC lightweight title, so you moved up happy. You fought Stevie Johnston. What do you remember about Stevie Johnston? I just, I wasn't the same. I wasn't the same fighter when I fought Stevie Johnston. What happened? Uh, I never, I never let nothing get in the way of my box, remember? Mm-hmm. So, I'm keen to after the fight. For the Stevie Johnston fight, I got dirty. During training, hmm. then I got clean. Then, then we fought him. And then during the fight, I'm in the locker room, and they're doing my hands. Or my trainer's wrapping my hands during the fight, and the devil's mask is right on the table. I'm looking at the devil's mask, and and all this going through my mind. Should I? Shouldn't I? Should I? Hmm. 
Should I wear it for the people? Shouldn't I wear it? No, I don't need to wear it. Shouldn't I? Fit the devil, he is nothing. Wear it. Don't wear it. Wear it. Don't. I, I had a tug of war in my soul, in my mind, about the devil's mask, about wearing it. Then I wore it because I wanted to please the people, because the people love the devil mask. I lost the fight. Mainly, I was not there in the fight. <clears throat> Mainly, I was not there for that mm. fight. Was nowhere near there for the fight. Mm. That's a tough, tough guy to fight when you not want to be there, really, you know? Yeah, if you're not there mentally for Steve Johnson, Steve Johnson is a good fighter. Mm -hmm. I took nothing away from Steve Johnson that, that fight. Yeah. But I was not 100%. I was not El Diablo. Mm -hmm. After that fight, Trinidad De La Hoya fight. Remember Trinidad De La Hoya fight? Yeah. yeah. I bet five grand on that fight for Trinidad. No, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah I, won, I won five. I won five grand. <laughs> mm -hmm. But 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 in reality, I knew in my mind that he didn't want to fight. Mm -hmm. I knew that. Mm -hmm. I knew De La Hoya won. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I bet. <laughs> yeah. But when I watched the fight after the fight, I was like, man, I lost five grand. <laughs> And when they said turn it in, I was like, yeah! <laughs> well, that, that night I had a party at my house. Uh -huh. And uh, everybody left. Me and my wife were just up doing cocaine for three days. No sleep, no water, no food. Wow. Just up, just up, just partying, partying, partying. Well, my wife went down to them in the bedroom. I thought I heard, I heard a voice. It's time. And I'm like, you can think of three days doing cocaine, you're skinny as can be, you know? Mm. And I wasn't a big guy, plus the cocaine, you know, three days without food, without water. Mm. Come on. I hear a voice say, it's time. And I'm like, in my room, with my hands together, time for what? Then I heard a voice say, it's time to take your life. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? Time to take my life. Then I heard another one, yeah, time to take your life. You ain't never going to be a champion. You ain't nobody. You ain't this. You ain't that. You ain't this. You ain't that. You ain't. I said, yeah, I'm not this. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not that. I ain't never going to be a champion. Well, who am I? I'm nobody. I ain't done this. I ain't nothing. I ain't this. I ain't that. I had a 45 in my closet. Hmm. And all I remember, oh, another voice. This voice I know. I know it was God. He said yes or no. I knew what yes meant. Mm -hmm. Serve him. Serve Jesus. Or no. Serve the devil. Go to hell. So I'm contemplating in my mind, fighting in my mind, hearing voices in my mind, yes or no. Stupid, dumb, you're never gonna be champion, you're never gonna be, you, you ain't going on. Seconds away from taking my life, my wife heard a gunshot. Pa! This is what she tells me. She runs upstairs, she comes to the door, I look at her. She looked at me, I said, that's it. She said, what do you mean that's it? I said, I gave my life to Christ. Hmm. I, I didn't even have a gun in my hand. The gun was in the closet. Hmm. She heard a gunshot. Wow. That's why I said yes to God. Hmm. Remember, I said, is it yes or no? I said yes. Hmm. And right there, I was sober. Bam. Yeah. Sober. Wow. Sober. That's amazing. Amazing that's stuff. That's God. Yeah, that's God. Yeah, it is. That's, that's, the, I tell you, that's why I want to do a book on my life. Mm -hmm. I just don't got the right people yeah, to, to, to do a book, a story of my life. Yeah. You yes. know? Yeah. Half half devil, half angel. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. I can see the picture. The, 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 the angel behind the devil's mask. Or the devil's mask behind the angel. Or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it, 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 
it, it can blow people's mind what I've gone through in my life, what I've accomplished in my life, still on the streets doing drugs, still partying, still doing, doing. They, the, nobody knew I was doing all this, just me and my wife we were together. Um, just nobody knew, my children didn't know, but nobody knew my life, what, what was going on when I was out partying and this and that. And, they get the phone call and boom, I, I'm sober. Hmm. Nobody knew. Yeah. That's the that happened with Steve Johnson. I was, I was double-minded. Yeah. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Mm -hmm. I was double-minded. I was yes or no. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know the word double-minded or not. I, I, I didn't know. What, I was, I was kind of putting in my mind. I mean, can I beat him? Can I beat him? No, I can't beat him. Can I beat him? No, I can't beat him. Can I beat him? Yeah, I can beat him. No, I can beat him. I, mean, I was so messed up on my mentally for that fight. It was pathetic. Hmm. Wow. But nobody knew. Mm -hmm. I never used it as an excuse. Yeah, man. I never told people what was going on. Because mm -hmm. in the right mind, I wasn't in my right mind at the time, like I am now. I can look back at my life now and tell you what happened during everything, what, what took place during the fights. Hmm. I can tell you voices I heard, hmm. whether it was God or whether it was the devil. I can tell you that. Hmm. Yeah. Now, yeah. during the time, I was lost. I can't tell you nothing. <laughs> I was lost. I was, I was double-minded. Well, here you are, man. You're found now. You found yourself. I'm, I'm blessed now. Yeah. I'm thankful now. I'm born again now. I'm mm -hmm. happy. Yeah. I, and I'm content with such things that I have. I'm content. I don't have much, Chris. Mm -hmm. Chris, right? Yeah. Yep. I don't have much. I don't have millions of dollars like I used to have. I blew it all. Mm. And what did I get to the story about, about when the IRS came after me? Ah, oh, shit. Nice. You want to hear some stuff? I'm going to blow your mind. Yeah. When, when did this happen? Did that happen? This, this this is after my career. No, oh, okay. Well, let's save it. Let's save it for after the career. <laughs> wow, man. You got you got a book. <laughs> I can write the book. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll do it. No, nah, I'm gonna. Do it, I'm gonna we'll get. Do it. I'm gonna make sure the right people hear this. They're gonna come yeah, to you. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. We'll do it. Let's do it, man. Well, you you tell me what you want off the top. What percentage you want, and we'll do it. That sounds good. I'm not going to take any percentage, man. I'm going to do things myself. I'm not going to capitalize off your life, Angel. <laughs> no, but I want you to make some because the labor's worth his wages. Yeah, but you're you, still helping, bro. So, I what, mean. That's what Facebook's about, me. Angel, man. Facebook. You, you use your Facebook and you can get right in touch with all the right people, man. And then get this right. story and make everybody hear your story. And that's what I want to do. Right. Yeah. Well, I want you to open up my Facebook. Yeah, right, man. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a computer. My wife deals with a laptop computer. That's her, though. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. now, she don't let you use her computer. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't mess with computers, man. Okay. Hey, man. Yeah. Now after I that Stevie Johnson fight, that's when that happened. After the Stevie Johnson fight. Well, what happened? Where when you changed your life and you and your wife heard the gunshot and you just yep. said no. Yep. It was before the Sean Fletcher fight? Huh? It was before the Sean Fletcher fight, your next fight after Stevie Johnson? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what, what happened in that Sean Fletcher fight? Do you remember that one? I knocked him out. Yeah. Nothing special, really? Just an easy fight? No, when I knocked him out, I ran to the ropes and I shook the ropes. Ah, and I screamed extremely loud. Mm -hmm. I forgot what I said, but I said something, but I forgot what I said. I forgot what I said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I was, uh, when they interviewed me, for the, when they was being interviewed, I said, I'm born again, I'm saved. I still wasn't born again yet. Mm -hmm. I was saved, but I wasn't saved from hell. I was, I was saved, but I wasn't there yet. There was a process of, salvation is a process. You gotta get born again, mm -hmm. be saved. I wasn't born again at the time. I was claiming Jesus, proclaiming Jesus. I thought I was saved. Mm -hmm. I was saved 
from hell. Yes, I was saved from hell. I didn't take my life. I was saved from hell, but I wasn't born again yeah. at the time. Well, you gotta you gotta but, uh, claim it before it happens. Sometimes. Well, you gotta walk in it. That's the right. actions show for you for your works. You know. Yeah, it's true. Man. You're inspirational, man. You put you put a few wins together after that, and then you ended up getting a shot at Diego Corrales' IBF Super Featherweight title. What do you remember about at that? At one weight. At one weight. One one thirty again, huh? Yeah, I could make one thirty. <laughs> what were you I doing? I could make one thirty. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I when I fought Sean Fletcher, it was at one thirty two. Mm -hmm. Sean Fletcher was talking stuff. He was, he fought in Indiana. I was there at the fight when we fought in Indiana. He called me out. Mm -hmm. When he called me out, it motivated me. Mm -hmm. to be like to give him an opportunity to fight me, to give him a chance to fight me. So I gave him the opportunity to shut his mouth up, you know, mm -hmm. talking a lot of stuff at me. So I gave him the opportunity to my floor, I want to fight Sean Fletcher, and they made the fight happen. Mm -hmm. That's how we should have Sean Fletcher's mouth when we knocked him out cold. And after I knocked him out cold, I went over there. If you watched the fight, I went over there, laid my hands on him, and I prayed over him. Wow. Took my hands off of him, went back in the corner. He got up off that floor, came straight to me, said, thank you. Thank you for praying for me. Hmm. No problem, brother. And I gave him a hug, and we went our way. Wow. So what made you go back down to 130 again for Diego Crabbe? Because I made 132. Okay. So I said, two pounds, I can do it. I'm a different man now. I can do it. It's, I'm not playing mind games with my mind anymore. I can do it. Mm -hmm. But in reality, I couldn't do it. Yeah. But in my mind, I said I could do it. And mm -hmm. after I made the weight at 130, I couldn't, I couldn't gain no damn weight after that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So when I fought Diego Crowell, I was very small. Mm -hmm. And what did you think of Diego? He was humongous. Yeah, he was, he was uh, he Goliath. I said, he's Goliath, I'm David. Mm -hmm. you know, but in reality, how can I be David mm -hmm. if I ain't if I ain't comfortable with the weight class? Which I thought I was, but in reality, my playing tricks on you, boss. Your mm -hmm. body is one thing, your mind's another. You gotta listen to your body, and then your mind can line up with your body. Mm -hmm. Or the mind, the body can line up with the mind. It works both ways. Mm -hmm. So, I I lost that fight. After that fight, I went back up to 135. So he was a Goliath. I couldn't, huh? I said he was a Goliath. I mean, you would you would wish you had a slingshot for that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, babe. for real. Well, he he was uh, he was he was he was a big dude, man. He yeah. was a big one thirty. Now, what was his punches yeah. feeling like? That guy should have been a welcome. It wasn't that his punches feel like. It's like when he hit me, mm -hmm. it's like I'll fall. Every time he hit me, it seems like I fell. Mm -hmm. You know, I was wondering what the heck's going on in my mind. I'm like, what's going on? You know, I was light on my feet. I, I couldn't make the weight. I couldn't gain no weight back. I can I couldn't. I just wasn't myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In reality, I found that out in the ring. Mm -hmm. I didn't find out before. Before I said, I could do it. I could do it. I could do it. In the ring, I found out, you can't do it. You can't do it. You psyched yourself out, boss. You couldn't do this. You couldn't do this. And I couldn't have done it. You know, I, I took my hat off to Jerry. He, he, he was a good fighter. He's passed away now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. What would you guys say at the press conference to each other? I don't remember saying it. I just remember saying that I'm, I'm David, he's Goliath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you fought Carlos Ramirez. What do you remember about that fight next? I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that one. How about Juan Polo Perez? Guy had like 70 fights. Remember anything about that one? Nope. How about Juan Macias? Nope. <laughs> Verdell Smith. Nope. Lamar Murphy. Yeah. Yeah, Lamar, Lamar Murphy. He was the, pretty good. The sky was blue as could be. Mm -hmm. Bluest sky I ever saw in my life. 
Mm-hmm. But I didn't see this guy doing a fight. Mm-hmm. It, was Indian, it was an Indian reservation casino. Mm-hmm. I saw this guy in a picture after the fight. I said, oh, holy moly, was this the sky? This was the Bible. They said that when we were fighting, it was raining. It was raining, bro. It was raining all around the ring, but not in the ring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You believe that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. My wife said it was raining. I said, what? No, it wasn't. I didn't feel no rain. It wasn't raining in the ring. It was raining outside the ring. Mm-hmm. Wow. No raindrops landed in the ring. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, I believe it, man. What happened? With me, I have a little daughter. She's like, five. she just turned five. She was four on Thanksgiving. And she made this... uh Indian wear, this Indian Indian headgear, and she was uh-huh. starting to dance. I said, "Do a rain dance." As soon as she started doing a rain dance, it started raining. It was just so crazy. Oh wow! There's something magical, man. There's something about Indian people. Wow. <laughs> she magical. was born Thanksgiving. No, she she made something in school on Thanksgiving. Oh. A, a hat with Indian feathers, and she put it on, and she started dancing because I told her to. And it oh, actually wow. started raining. I, I, I was I got married Thanksgiving. Did you? Wow. On Thanksgiving? November, November 26th. In the ring, right? 1998. That's it. Got married. That's beautiful. I was trying to feel married with the fight. It's been a long time. Yes, long sir. Time. So, what did you think of Lamar Murphy as a fighter? Did he show you anything? Uh, he, he and, uh, I was thinking this Christian. Mm-hmm. This one, Christian, was come, was been out. And I was thinking this Christian, and I was... Pissing it out a lot, you know, and I kept on, I had diarrhea for the fight and all that during the fight, the day of the fight. And I was on the toilet the day of the fight, pissing and, and going on the toilet, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I was, my stomach was messed up during the fight. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, but uh, I did what I had to do. <laughs> that sucks, man. That's a lousy place to have a diarrhea stomach ache. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. It happens because I was taking creatine, you know, yeah. this stuff, it, it, didn't, uh, it didn't react to my body. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a different trainer and different supplements and all that, and it just didn't uh, react good to my body. Yeah, yeah. I wish you had some Depends to wear, not, not, a, not a belt, <laughs> not a cup, protective cup. Yeah. <laughs> Then after that, you fought Julio Diaz, undefeated kid. Until, yeah, until Julio he fought Diaz. you. Would, would you? Huh? I said he was undefeated till he fought you. Right. Would you? Would you think of that fight? Well, you know, some told me he was going to throw a lot of punches, and he died. He did. But I thought he was going to do, and some told me the block and punch, block and punch, block mm-hmm. and punch. So I did exactly like, like what my mind was telling me to do. Blocking a lot of his punches. Mm-hmm. Throwing punches. Blocking. I throwing, I was blocking more than I was throwing. But he couldn't hit me. He only caught me one time and cut me. Caught me with an uppercut. Cut me and I caught him on the left hook and cut him at the same time. Next punch I caught him with. Mm-hmm. And uh, we won the fight. That was a good fight. Defense. Defense won the fight this fight. Mm-hmm. That was a good fight, man. You know. It was all right. It 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 wasn't a Matt Pretty fight, though. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. A, it wasn't. A, they were. They they uh. They didn't see El Diablo no more. Mm-hmm. When when I when I when I converted and changed, and the guy was done with my life. Mm-hmm. That was a different chapter of the book. Yeah. yeah. I was a different person, and uh, I didn't have to kill anything like I. Used to. Mm-hmm. When I was out of the I had to get something was turned on, you know. When they, after the car accident, something was turned on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I was when I was uh, Manfredi got Jesus during that time, I was got Jesus. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't the same fighter. I didn't have to get anything. I didn't have to. I was just doing it just to do it. It, it just wasn't. I, did, I still loved it, mm-hmm. but it just wasn't. Just was didn't have the same. Didn't. Didn't think the same. Yeah, I loved you. Diablo. I thought 
about kill, steal, destroy. Yeah. When I got to, when I got, when I thought I had Jesus at the time, mm-hmm. I was trying to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah, what's good is a person. Huh? Made you a better person, but it doesn't work yeah. as far as fighting goes. Yeah. Yeah. Is it getting too late, Angel? You want to do the rest tomorrow? No, no. Oh, okay. No, we'll do it. All right. And then your next fight, you fought Paul Spadafora. What do you remember about him? Pretty slick guy, undefeated at the man, time. Man, he's a joke, man. Mm-hmm. He got me, man. He rigged it up again. Oh. Uh-huh. The boxing gloves that we put on were, were uh, everlasting. Oh, okay. Gloves couldn't even fit in my hand. I got big hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got very big hands for my size. Mm-hmm. A small frame, but I got big hands and long arms. Mm-hmm. Those gloves, I couldn't even fit my whole hand. Couldn't even make a fist in those gloves. I wanted to have a raise, and they put everlasting <coughs> in there. Hmm. I couldn't even put my hands in the gloves. So during the fight, I was pity patting. And they said, why ain't Man Freddy hitting them with Paul? What's going on? What's up with Man Freddy? I was pity patting because I couldn't, I couldn't, hit him with my fist, my my full power, because I, I couldn't even make a fist, wow. you know, yeah. during the fight. So I went the whole fight pity patting, and then I argued and complained that I won the fight. No, nah, I didn't win the fight. You see, I didn't win the fight. Mm-hmm. But but I couldn't make a fist in the gloves, everlasting gloves. Yeah. The generic gloves, you know, the terrible gloves to fight at. Mm-hmm. I guess they're just a boxer's glove. That's why Spider Four wanted it, you know. Yeah, yeah, they're they're terrible gloves, man. I mm-hmm. was just I was extremely ticked off when I got in the ring because I couldn't make a fist. I couldn't squeeze the glove and make a fist that way I could hit, you know. I could, so I was pity patting during the whole fight. Mm-hmm. So they didn't see nothing, you know. They didn't see nothing. They didn't see no action from me because I couldn't do nothing because I couldn't make a fist. You know, so it was, they had all worked up what they wanted to do and how they wanted, what they wanted to do in the fight. Yeah. Then after that fight, you fought Antonio Ramirez. You won a majority decision. What do, you, what do you remember about that fight? I don't remember that one. No. Then, did you have any fight after the, uh, after the conversion, I guess? Did you have any fight that you were proud of after that? Or was all the passion gone? Passion wasn't there. Yeah. Totally. So I, so I, uh, well, what fight are you on now? We're going to the Moises Pedroza fight. Remember that fight? No. No? He's a pretty good fighter, too. You won TKO7. How about John Bailey? No. Uh, Courtney no. Burton? Courtney Burton was a pretty good fighter. No, he's not a good fighter. You know, during that fight, when I fought Courtney Burton, I was going through depression. Mm-hmm. As a Christian, I was going through depression and I didn't want to fight. I was in the locker room, day of the fight, crying. Yeah. My pastor, my pastor was in the locker room. He didn't go. My pastor don't, don't go. He don't watch boxing, but he was in the locker room with me, pray for me, because I was crying and shaking because I didn't want to fight. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to fight. I'm, I'm, I didn't train for the fight. I didn't even train for for the court and burden fight. I didn't even train for that fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I used to go to the gym, to the gym, I used to start crying. Hmm. My wife got me, uh, I forgot the chair's name for that fight. Uh, forgot his name. But uh, I hated, I didn't like that dude. Who was he? his name. A personal trainer? Name. No, the trainer that my wife hired for the fight. Hmm. According to the Burton fight. I didn't, I didn't like this guy. And I, I was crying, crying in tears. Hmm. Day of the fight, at the fight. Yeah. I was mentally depressed. I was going through depression during that time. I did not know what I was going through. Mm-hmm. And I was in my locker room saying, I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. I'm telling my passion, I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was a sad time in my life. But Tell after him. I lost that fight, after I lost that fight, he knocked me down. When knocked me down, I told the referee, I put my hand over my my throat, told him to stop the fight. I told him to stop the fight, and he stopped the fight. Mm-hmm. I lost the fight, I, I didn't talk to nobody, and I just wanted to get out of there. I just 
just wanted to go. Something came over me after that fight. Mm -hmm. wow. I got the hunger back to fight again. So I fought, who's the guy that you're going to name West. again? Johnny West. Johnny West. I fought him and knocked him out, right? Yeah, last pro win, TKO9. Okay, I knocked him out. Yep. I had a new trainer again. I got rid of all my old trainers. Uh, we we forgot we forgot about my, I, I forgot to take all my trainers too. Yeah. What, what what fight was the last what, one with Kelowna? What we do? What, uh, I think it's better for. Okay, yeah. So what happened there? Why why did you change trainer? It was time for change. I felt. Mhm. Mm but in reality, it wasn't. It was it was uh, I shouldn't have made that change. Yeah. I, I messed up when I made that change. Did you ever apologize to Sam and say it was? I apologize. I apologize to Taylor. Mhm. Mm but I, I haven't talked to Sam. Yeah. What do you think he'd say if he did call him? I got his number. Mhm. Mm you know, I haven't had the opportunity to give him a call. Why? Sometimes I didn't have the opportunity to give him a call. I just he haven't came to my heart to give him a call and just talk to him about the past. Mhm. Mm you think you will? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah I, I talked to Taylor about a week ago. I told mm -hmm. him everything. Oh, that's great, man. He, he said, he said, he, he told me, he said, he, he said, you know, he told me, he said, I said, you're a man, though. That's what he told me. I said, I said yeah, I'm a man. He said, okay, you made the decision. That's your decision you made. You're a man. You could do that. So I know, but that was wrong. It was a wrong decision. It hurt my career. Mm hmm but I kept the team together, everything would have been good. Yeah, but you're at that age, you're at the time, you're, you know, I just, it was something I had to go through, you know? Mm. And I realized that after I talked to Taylor, I was like, yeah, something I had to go through, I guess, you know? Mm -hmm. And then uh, after that giant West fight, I told Colin Brown, Colin Burton now, I know you're watching, fight me now, Colin Burton, I ain't depressed no more. And he wouldn't fight me. Mm -hmm. Then we fought uh, Craig Weber. Weber. Or Weber. Craig Weber. That was on TV again too, and I watched. It, you know, I lost the fight. Mm -hmm. I didn't train properly for the fight as well. The other fight I was going through depression again, mm -hmm. and I didn't train. You know, my my fire came out of me after the the West fight. Uh, the fire came out of me again, and I got depressed again. Then I didn't train properly for that fight. And I fought the fight, went 10 rounds. Then I heard a voice. That's it. I looked at my wife and said, that's it. She said, what do you mean that's it? I said, that's it. She said, what are you saying that's it? I said, that's it. I'm done. I'm retired. I'm giving up. Mm -hmm. I don't want to fight no more. I don't love it no more. I gave it up right after that. I didn't know, I didn't know what I was going to do, Chris. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was going to do after boxing. Did not know what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. I never did that job in my life. I never had a job. Mm -hmm. If I did have a job, it didn't last long. Because something always brought me back to boxing. Yeah. Something always brought me back to boxing was my job. Mm -hmm. Boxing and was your after job. I, after I retired boxing, I didn't know what I was going to do. I was, in, I was in awe. After I heard that voice, that's it. I already knew what to do. Mm -hmm. Tell my wife, that's it. She said, what do you mean that's it? I said, that's it. What are you saying that's it? That's it, I'm done. I don't want to fight no more. I don't love it no more. It's not me no more. This is not me. Was, was she supportive? Yes, yeah, she, she, she okay. That's great, man. That's all she could say is okay, you know, at the time, you know. Because she already knew I made it up. You know, mm -hmm. when I heard that voice in my mind, it was already made up in my mind once I heard that voice. I know God was telling me that's it. Yeah. During this time, I was already born again. I was mm -hmm. born again three years prior to this fight. Mm -hmm. wow. And what about like getting in a training or anything? You thinking about doing that? Say it again? You thinking about getting into maybe training fighters and being a trainer or anything else? I, I, would, I would like that. I don't have a license. I don't have a driver's license. Okay. I have a suspended license because I was a bad boy in my past, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's not the problem. The license is not the problem. 
just in the area, Indiana, mm-hmm. they don't take care of their own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I put them on the mat. Eat Gary, Indiana. Eat Chicago, Indiana. Hobart, Indiana. Mm-hmm. Not Crown Point, Indiana. I put them on the map, yeah. on TV, and became world champion and beat the best and won the best, lost to the best. I did all that to them, and, and they don't do nothing for me. You think they're trying to give me a, a city job with the boxing uh, gym they have mm-hmm. in Gary, Indiana? Mm-hmm. Think they're trying to give me the? I don't want a job. I, all I want to do is help kids. Mm-hmm. All I, all I want to do is train kids, <clears throat> kids. I don't want to train pros. I want nothing to do with pro. Mm-hmm. Amateur. Yeah. I can train technique, skill. I know how to train because I know how to fight. Mm-hmm. That's all I know how to do is fight and train. That's all I know how to do is how to get their person to become a world champion. But they have to have that will to become a world champion. But that's what I want to do. I want to help kids get off the streets, mm-hmm. mentor the kids in the Bible, mentor the kids in school, mentor these kids with boxing. Yeah. Now, did you did want, you ever think of relocating, maybe, to a place that? No, I'm 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 content in Crown Point, Indiana. I like Crown Point, Indiana. Mm-hmm. I love it out here. I don't love it, but I like it. And they have very good schools for my kids. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm going to stay in Crown Point until, until God tells me to leave. I'm not ready right now, though. Mm-hmm. I haven't had nobody offer me nothing to go anywhere to do anything else. You know, a lot of promises from a lot of people. They're going to want to show up and say he's going to do a movie on me. Uh, Magic Johnson, they all want to do something with me, but... You know, it's, you know, a lot of promises, you know. Yeah. Nobody likes to lose, man. Yeah. So what happened with um the IRS after? Oh, oh. I remember. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm born again. I'm born again then. I'm born again now. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, I didn't know what I was going to do. So, uh. I had some episodes, you know, some mental breakdowns, and, and I got to get Social Security. Mm-hmm. Now I collect Social Security. I get 1600 a month from Social Security. That's decent money, mm-hmm. but not having nothing. 16 but then nothing, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. And I get that, and plus my wife works, so we make it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what what do you think boxing should do about that kind of situation? Because you're a you're a guy who should never never be you know looking for anything and never be struggling. What do you think boxing should do for people like you and other fighters in situations that are lousy? Yeah, I, think, I, I think boxing should 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 open up something for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they should do something for us. Like four players, they take care of their own. Baseball mm-hmm. players, they take care of their own. You know, boxing, no different. They should take care of their own. Mm-hmm. You know, and open up a franchise and do something, take care of the fighters, you know. You think anything like uh, that will ever happen in the sport? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I think I it needs know. like a, a government people, title. People, yeah. People are so money hungry, it's pathetic, you know. Yeah. They're, Actually, I didn't like him uh, running for president, but John McCain was trying to do something. I remember he was talking to Roy Jones like years ago when Roy was still in his in his prime, and he was trying to make like a Muhammad Ali law or something like that, or a Muhammad Ali bill maybe, and right. look out for fighters. But then it just died and went under. Never heard anything about it again. But that that's that's a good John McCain actually boxed before. I think something's got to happen, you know. Something yeah, happened. you know, but you know. Too many, too many people that, too many hands in pockets, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They, they, too money hungry, you know, to do something, you know? Mm-hmm. These guys making 20 million a fight. Those pay per view, they're probably making 30 million a fight. Mayweather, you know, mm-hmm. percentage of that should go into the fund to, to do something. Mm-hmm. Fighters that, 
No, I got nothing. You know, like Wilfredo Benitez. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he's broke. Uh, mm -hmm. After a fight, after the Sean Fletcher fight, mm -hmm. he came up to me. I looked at him. I saw his situation. I saw his. I cut a check for $5,000. Did not even know the guy. Mm -hmm. Wilfredo Benitez here. Gave it to him. He put it in his fund. He has a fund of Wilfredo Benitez. I gave him the five grand. He lost everything, the mm -hmm. drugs and all of that. Yeah. And I blessed him after the fight, Sean Fletcher fight. Yeah, that's great. Cut my shit for five grand. Mm -hmm. you know, so we, we fighters should look up for fighters. We should we, we should open a, a boxing fund. Yeah. Take care of take care of boxers, you know. Yeah, and I was thinking about like people like Golden Boy and Golden Boy Promotions and people like Bob Arum and Don King who made millions off of like fighters and undercard fighters were a part of it, you know, something's got to happen. It's got to right. happen. You know? I, I talk to a lot of people who, who are down and out and injured and stuff, you know, it's not good. Right. Every, every sport looks out for their, their athletes and stuff, but it's right. not boxing. It's yeah, it's like me, like me, I didn't know what I was going to do after boxing. Yeah. I didn't know what I was going to do. It's so scary, bam. Got so scary, now I got so scary, I'm all good. Mm -hmm. They say I'm bipolar. Mm -hmm. Say what you want to say. I took my medicine. Yes, I do. But I don't believe I am. But they say I am. Okay. You know, a couple of instances I had. Yeah, I made some mistakes. You know what I'm saying? I did some things that I shouldn't have done. I said some things that I shouldn't have said. Oh, well, I'm bipolar now. Okay, cool. I took my medicine, but I get $1,600 a month. Mm -hmm. Text free. Yeah. So and my wife works, so we make it. That's so I didn't, have, I didn't have nothing after boxing. I didn't know what I was going to do about money. I blew it all. I blew mm -hmm. millions and millions of dollars. I mm -hmm. blew it all. So I didn't know what I was going to do. And then God provides Social Security. I paid it to Social Security, my taxes and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, now we want to, what you want to talk about? Mm -hmm. The IRS? <laughs> yeah. What happened there, man? <laughs> okay, uh, it was after this. Stevie Johnson fight. Okay. My wife, uh, we had to pay taxes. Mm hmm And tax was, what I owe was 500000 So, okay, cut a check for 500000 gave it to my wife. She went, she paid it, she came back home, she looked at me, I said, never again. She said, hmm. what do you mean, never again? I said, never again. She said, what are you saying? I said, never will I pay taxes again. They mm -hmm. don't put food on the table. They don't take the blows I take. They don't fight all over the world. They didn't buy this house. They don't put the clothes on, on the kids, feed the kids. They don't do nothing for me. Why would I pay taxes? I ain't never paying taxes again. So I went seven and a half years without paying taxes. Wow. And, and during the time, I'm, I'm, I'm done with boxing now. Mm -hmm. During the time, yeah. they sent me a letter. I'm a Christian now. I'm mm -hmm. apostolic. I'm a Christian apostolic. Remember that? Apostolic. That's the church you need to go to. Apostolic. I'm Christian now. Apostolic. Cool. He sent me a letter in the mail saying oh, $1.5 million. Wow. I Indeed. just look at my wife. She looked at me. I said, no, we will pray about it. I put it down. We prayed. We left it alone. We ignored it. Mm -hmm. The letters kept on coming in, saying, oh, $1.5 million. I said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Next thing you know, I end up in the attorney's office. I did not know how I got to the attorney's office. And I knew the, the owner of the, the firm. His name is Nick Darrell. He's mm -hmm. Italian. He's Italian. They're monsters, man. They're awesome, man. But he, he, he helped me. I said, Nick. He said, yeah, man, pretty. I said, I got a problem. He said, what it is? Tell me. I said, the IRS keep on sending me letters saying, oh, $1.5 million. Do you know anybody that can help me? Can you help me? He said, yes, I got the perfect guy. He wrote his name down, Bob Moyes. Bob Moyes gave me his number and his name. My wife called him, set the appointment up, went to go see him. Mm -hmm. Went to see him, went to his office. There's a six-point star in his office. I said, he's a man of God. He's a Jew. <laughs> he's a man of God. This is a God. This is God. God's going to take care of everything, but don't worry about nothing. Went to his office, sat down. 
licked it. We gave them all a paperwork, what they've been sitting here saying we want one for five million dollars. Mm-hmm. He looked at it, talked to us here and there, said this, said that. Then he said, how much can you afford to pay monthly for the rest of your life? Mm-hmm. I said, I can't afford to pay nothing. I blew it up, but I had my house paid off, but I didn't tell him. I put that bad boy for sale. I, I did everything, you know, I was getting rid of everything because they were going to give me. They were going to come from my house. My house was already paid off. They were going to come and get that. And I, I was $300,000 off. They were going to come get it. They were going to do all that. But I was smart. You know, I just, I just said, uh, I said, we blew it up. We blew it up. We, we, we. So he was kind of disappointed on that we blew it up. We couldn't afford a thing. He said, we'll see what I can do. So he, he was negotiating with the RS. And I, during that time, I was a bricklayer. A brother from the church, he's a bricklayer, his name is Marco Serrano. He's a bricklayer, he's been a bricklayer for 15 years now. He's a good bricklayer too, he's awesome, man. The way he builds the brick, man. The, when they finish bricking everything, man, man, it's awesome how he finishes, man. You ever seen somebody uh, brick a house? No, no. The house is like empty and they start brick laying it, mm-hmm. the start of it, but when you see the whole finish of it, you're like, wow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he, he got me into brick laying, so I went to brick laying school, got to that, I went there for three months to school in Indianapolis, and came back, started brick laying. I was uh, just a press. I wasn't a journeyman yet. I had to go to school, to go to state of school, but I went through situations in school where I got out of I got out of the school and I got out of Brooklyn because they were laying you know, off all the time. It wasn't steady work, you know. Mm-hmm. I was ready for something that's consistent, you know. I want something out of work. Let's work, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Every day, let's work, but only time I worked when I was in the mill. When I was in the mill, I had easy 40 hours a week. Mm-hmm. But when you when you bricklay outside, it's different. Mm-hmm. You might get five hours or eight hours. One, you get when you're one day and you're off three weeks. Mm-hmm. You know, I get called back to work one day or two days, and you're off three weeks again. So I, I got kind of, I got tired of that. I said, man, I can't do this, man. This ain't me. Mm-hmm. They weren't, they weren't gonna put me back in the mail because I wasn't a journeyman. So I just said, forget this. I'm done with this. I don't want to do this. No, this ain't gonna provide for my family. So remember, I still didn't have social security then. I still don't have social security. I'm, so I'm, I'm like, what, well, what am I gonna do? You know? So I quit Brickland. Oh, 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 I can't, let me rewind. <laughs> I'm at, I'm at, I'm at, I'm at, I'm at, I'm at and it's still, and my wife just got to talk to the IRS. Mm-hmm. She had talked to the IRS, but the IRS was upset because they wanted their money. Mm-hmm. She called me at lunchtime when I was in birthday school. I said, hello? She sounded nervous. I said, hello? She said, you babe? So I talked to the RS, you want to hear what they had to say? I said, go ahead and tell me, I ain't worried about nothing. God got my back, go ahead and tell me. I said, you sure you want to hear what they had to say? Hmm. I said, babe, if I got to go to jail, so be it. I go to jail, I'll do my time. But everybody in jail is going to get saved. I ain't worried about nothing. Go ahead and tell me. He said, you sure you want to hear what they say? I said, go ahead and tell me, go ahead and tell me. It's gone. Gone, what do you mean gone? It's gone. What are you saying? Gone. It's gone. And it wasn't 1.5 million. It was 3.5 million dollars. It's gone. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's gone, brother. That's great. <laughs> well, it's not. It's not totally gone now. Yeah. now. This is. This is. This is where the three and a half million is gone. That's gone. But mm. I got a 10-year lien on my credit. Mm. You know what that means? Uh, I heard of it. I don't know exactly what it means, though. Okay, I can't make over fifty thousand. Oh, okay. If I make over fifty thousand, they'll take it. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So, if I hit the lotto, they're mm-hmm. taking their money. Yeah. That's the only way they. Can, that's the only. <laughs> that's the only way they can get their money. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So basically, they're not getting their money. <laughs> 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 I got three. I, I got three years to go. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I, I got three years to go. Yeah, that's good. That's good for you. <laughs> yeah, three and a half, three and a half million dollars. Yeah, man. Wow. I got, I got three, I got three years to go, and it's gone. Mm. After ten years, it's gone. Wow. So after, and I got, man. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Nice. That's a nice loophole. <laughs> that's God, brother. Yeah. You're afraid about it. He takes care of me. Yeah. He, he always, he always took care of me, even when I was El Diablo. Mm -hmm. He was always there. Yep. He always knew what the people wanted, but what the people weren't going to get. Mm. When, I, when, I, when I went from devil to angel, they didn't like angel. They didn't like Jesus. They didn't like me talking about Jesus. They didn't like that. Mm -hmm. People put, they weren't at my face no more the movie started. They weren't ever, no why, because I was claiming Jesus. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to be around when you're claiming the name of Jesus, when you proclaim the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. He said, but if I be lifted up, I draw up and to me. I'm mm -hmm. lifting up the name of Jesus now. He's my God. He's my Father. He's everything to me, man. And I, and I ain't going to deny him for nobody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No matter what depression you're in, just keep struggling. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what I go through in life. That's right. I've been through it all. Yep. I've been through depression. Mm -hmm. I, I've been through oppression. Mm -hmm. I've been through situations. I had millions. I had it all. I, I could buy anything. Mm -hmm. Do anything. Travel anywhere. That's it. Then I, I had it all took it from me. Yeah. Then I blew it all. I'm, now, now I'm, I'm content. Mm -hmm. I got a little house. I live in a little house right now. We got a three bedroom house. Mm -hmm. What we made is a four bedroom. Mm -hmm. it, it's a small little house. You see it, you be like, wow, that's small. But you know what? We're content. Mm -hmm. We're happy with what we got. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we didn't ask somebody to, we didn't ask somebody to help. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we go, sometimes we don't have food. Sometimes mm -hmm. we go that way. Mm -hmm. And we pray, and God provides the food. Mm -hmm. It happens. It yeah, happens it sometimes. Good. Sometimes. That's right. But we keep our faith. We believe. We don't doubt. We know that God's going to make it. Mm -hmm. Provide the needs. The needs we met in our lives. Wow. That's crazy. Man. Regardless of yeah. what happens in our life, we don't, I've, I've been through it all. I've been through the storms. As Christians, you go through storms of many kinds, spiritual welfare. You go through all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. of many kinds as Christian. And you, and you, you, you endure. The Bible says, they that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. It's the enduring to the end is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. By 2013, May 13, 2013, the health care bill is going to be pushed. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm telling you? This is what I'm telling you. The health care bill is going to be pushed. They're going to be pushing the chip. The mark of the beast. 666. The chip. It's a microchip. It's, a, it's, it's as big as a, a grain of rice. Hmm. They want to implant plant these chips inside people. By 2017, they said everybody's going to have it. Yeah. Yep. It's happening, bro. It it's is. It's happening. I've been saying that, man. It's true. Oh yeah, in Mexico they 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 got over here in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Yep. People are getting it over there in Mexico, but in 2013, what 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 was May May 13, 2013, something's gonna happen with the healthcare. They're gonna the healthcare. They're gonna push that that chip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Man. It's already been it's already been told. Mark of the beast. It's happening. That's right. Man. Mark of the beast. It's happening. It's happening. The Bible That's is right. true. That's right, man. Bible, I am the Bible. I, I lived the Bible. I lived out the Bible. Mm -hmm. Everything everything the Bible says I did negative, I did. Yeah. I broke the... I, I, I did what the Bible said. I fornicated. I committed adultery. I, I lasciviousness, covetedness. I did it all. Yeah. I was greedy. I was... I was nasty. I, I didn't care about my kids. I didn't take care of my kids. I wasn't a father. I wasn't a husband. I didn't do nothing. I didn't stay with everybody else. I didn't do the drugs. I didn't care about nothing. I didn't care. I was the Diablo. I did not matter to me. 
Mm. But boom, angel came. That's it. Old things passed away, but all things are made new. And you ask for I'm blessings. I'm a new man now. That's it. Ask for the blessings and man. you will receive it. Yeah, I'm a new man now. That's it. God bless you. Know you know what I'm saying? I, I, I relate. Yep. People, I feel people, you know what I'm saying? I feel people, I let people know my story, my life, what I've gone through in my life. And that's great. They, they hear what I've gone through, they see what I've gone through, they say, man, you should make a movie what you've gone through, bro. Mm -hmm. That's true. I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, my life is a movie. 